That's right. This week on Conspiracy Theories and Chill, we're going to get into aliens and UFOs and what I think is going on with the whole alien UFO um, story, um, whatever you want to call it, what I think is going on there. But first, let me tell you how you can support the show. You can support my shows by uh, donating to us through the links I've provided in the description, and I'll also add them in the comments below. You can support us through Patreon, which I prefer. That's, subscri that's a subscription-based program. You would donate to us every month. Um, you can do a dollar a follow just to show that you follow and like the shows, or you can do even higher amounts if you wanted to, 5 or $10 levels, and you get rewards, special prizes, and rewards for those levels. Or you can just send me a quick donation on PayPal, but if you can't donate and you still like the show, like and share. Uh, send faces across the screen. I love seeing that. And invite your friends. Those are all free. You can do all of those things, and those are all great, too. So without further ado, let's start the show. Let's start. Uh, let me tell you what I think is going on with aliens and UFOs. Aliens have been around for a long time. The alien uh, story is nothing new story. It's not a new story. You can find aliens mentioned in uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics. You can find they're mentioned, uh, they're talked about even in the Bible, except they're not called aliens. They're called the fallen, which we'll get into more a little later on. But there, any ancient text you want to talk about, the Mayans, um, I'm not thinking of more off the top of my head. I should have did a little more research on that point. But what I'm saying is even the Native Americans had stories about aliens. There's stories, many, 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 countless stories about aliens and, uh, you know, foreign entities that have interacted with humanity throughout time. That I don't dispute. Um, but what I'm going to break down, and now we're going to get back to the fallen really quick. What I'm going to break down is I don't believe that these uh, alien encounters are actually encounters with alien beings at all. I believe that what people are talking about when they're actually talking about an encounter with an alien or they're talking about seeing an alien, um, they're talking about a demon or a fallen angel. That's what I believe they're talking about. But we're going to we're going to explore all angles. Don't worry. It, it's, you don't have to be religious to enjoy this show. Anybody who watches it can tell you that we're going to go down both roads. That was just my personal opinion. But we're going to go ahead and talk about a couple incidents, famous incidents with uh, alien involving aliens and then kick around a couple theories on what we think might be going on here and what we think might be happening with this whole alien conspiracy and alien cover up stories about aliens as i just said have been around forever so what i'm going to do is i'm going to touch on like i was talking about a few big ones that you may or may not have heard about just to let you know that this is something that's been happening forever um so here we go i'm just going to start with a few examples here there's a famous story about chariots flying above judea ancient historian josephus may have been a witness to a ufo sighting of his own uh, this is what he describes seeing above judea for before sunset throughout all parts of the country chariots were seen in the air and armed battalions hurtling through the clouds and encompassing the cities josephus wrote of the event which occurred in judea in 65 ce these weren't the only mention of battles and chariot type of uh, crap flying around in the air. Two sightings, five years and 270 miles apart in Nuremberg, Germany and Basel, Switzerland, bore some striking similarity. In 1561, residents of Nuremberg witnessed what seemed to be an aerial battle over their city. They described objects like shaped orbs, crosses, cylinders, and a black arrow-like vessel. After some time, they heard what seemed to be a major crash outside the city. Residents of Nuremberg believed the sky battle was a religious sign. The event was recorded on a woodcut broadsheet by Hans Glasser, who said, whatever such signs mean, God alone knows. A woodcut dated five years later and created by Samuel Caucasus displays a similar scene, this time of red and black orbs battling over the town of Basel. The two towns may have seen UFOs battling in the sky, or in the heart of the Protestant Reformation, they may have been describing natural events that took on religious significance among the town's citizens in the midst of a time of religious upheaval. Yet another battle in the sky type of story is the Battle of Los Angeles. February 25th, 1942, something triggered anti-aircraft alarms and air raid sirens in Los Angeles, California. A blackout was called as searchlights pierced the night in search of Japanese attackers. 
Reports came in of an unidentified object floating off the coast of Los Angeles. The Army artillery went off on the offensive for an hour, beginning at approximately 3.15 a.m. on February 26th. Troops fired more than 1,400 shells, but were unable to shoot down the object. Shells exploding may have even been mistaken for enemy planes. Five people died during the blackout, three in car accidents, and two from heart attacks. No enemy planes or UFOs were hit by American shells, and eventually the blackout order was lifted and the president notified. At first, Secretary Harry L. Stimson claimed that 15 aircraft were involved in the battle. Then officials said it was simply a false alarm. Eventually, the Army claimed that the object was a weather balloon, sparking serious suspicions of a cover-up that continues still to this day. But many eyewitnesses claim there was an actual battle taking place with this object. Then, just a month before the Roswell incident, a pair of UFO sightings helped kick off our modern alien obsession and added flying saucers and men in black to the UFO lore. In June of 1947, Harold Dahl reported seeing six flying saucers shaped like donuts flying high above Puget Sound near Maury Island. Dahl claimed that one of these saucers exploded and that the debris struck his boat and injured his son. He showed evidence of the debris to his employer, Fred Cr Tacoma, Washington. Not long after the incident, though, Dahl reported that a man in a black suit threatened him and destroyed his photos. Eventually, he recanted his story after the FBI publicly denied it. But the Maury Island incident had already captivated the nation's imagination. But let's, and then, of course, you have a lot. You have the Roswell incident, Area 51, the Phoenix Lights. Um, there still happen to this day. I mean, you have a lot of hoax videos, too. But there are a lot of sightings of unexplained flying objects to this day. And just to put a little scientific validity on the whole alien discussion, which actually they're starting to do. They are starting, you will see NASA now talking about alien encounters and seeking out extraterrestrial life or intelligent life. But Stephen Hawking um, has also said that to his mathematical brain, the numbers alone make thinking about aliens perfectly rational. He went on to say that we should probably be afraid of them because if humans are any indication of how these beings would act, it's bad. He says we only have to look at ourselves to see how intelligent life might develop into something we wouldn't want to meet. I imagine they might exist in massive ships, having used up all the resources from their home planet. Such advanced aliens would perhaps become nomads, looking to conquer and colonize whatever planets they can reach. But other than UFOs and uh, people claiming to have actually seen a physical alien, there are a lot of other stories about aliens throughout history. People also think aliens interact with us in other ways. I am crop circles, for instance. We have a picture of a really intricate crop circle right there. Some people think that they do that, and maybe that they maybe they do. Maybe they do. Some of them maybe are real. A lot of them have been shown to be um, through these groups that will go in and make these intricate crop circles in a field in order to cause hysteria and get people to get all excited. And they can do this in the course of a night. You should see them do it. It's amazing. I'm not saying that all of them are that way, though. That it could very well possibly be that aliens have communicated with each other through markings like a crop circle in order to convey some sort of a message between them to communicate. Another example of this type of communication as far as etching into the grounds go would be the Nazca lines. Um, right here next to me over here, there is a slideshow going on of some of the Nazca lines. And what these are is a series of large ancient geoglyphs in the Nazca desert in southern Peru. The largest figures are up to 1,200 feet long. They were designated as a, an, a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994. The high arid plateau stretches more than 80 kilometers between the towns of Nazca and Papa on the, the Pampas de Jumana, about 400 kilometers south of Lima. Scholars believe the Nazca lines were created by the Nazca culture between 500 BCE and 500 CE. The figures vary in complexity. Hundreds are simple lines in geometric shapes. More than 70 are zoomorphic designs of animals such as birds, fish, llamas, jaguars, and monkeys, or even human figures. One I think actually kind of looks like a space fan. Other designs include photomorphic shapes such as trees and flowers. And while scholars may believe that the Nazca lines were created by the Nazca culture, others believe that these lines would have been impossible for people to have made and would also have taken upon lifetimes to be able to do. These things were huge, as I said before. Uh, the biggest of these are up to 1,200 feet long. 
and they're very intricate. You can't even, you couldn't see these things before they had air travel and the ability to get off the ground to a height where you could actually even see the monkey. So on the ground, you would be talking about in what years were this? Did they say this was done 500 BCE to 500 CE? So they were able to um, keep their distance, accuracy, and all that on the ground without being able to see what they were doing back then. That's what gives some people pause and what makes people believe that maybe uh, some kind of an alien culture was behind the Nazca lines. There's more, though. Uh, people believe that aliens have been helping out human society all throughout time. Almost all of the ancient megastructures, monolithic structures, you can find people and theories that alien technology or aliens had something to do with helping humans to be able to accomplish these things, to be able to move stones of these sizes, to be able to achieve measurements of these accuracies, to know where certain ley lines were, to find out these things. People believe that aliens helped the humans to be able to um, to make these meg mega structures that have stood the test of time and like the pyramids are accurate dimensions and things that they didn't believe were possible back then and stone made of stones uh, of sizes that, that they don't believe that they, they could have moved around back then. Many of these ancient structures, same story. So the people believe throughout time that aliens have helped humans and help them to accomplish these things. The Bible even goes into um, how the fallen, which is what I believe aliens are. I don't believe there's any such thing as aliens. I believe that aliens, when people tr describe aliens or they're talking about uh, the fallen or demons that live here on earth. But in the Bible, the, um, the fallen are the ones that teach humanity all about, you know, everything, the use of tools, um, alchemy and, and uh you know things like this things how like technology they i think that ancient ancient civilizations were more advanced than we are aware of and i i believe that this was through information from the fallen and but other people believe that this was information from aliens um i guess the difference of opinion there would be whether or not you believe aliens are real and from outer space or whether or not you believe that what people are calling aliens are the actually the fallen or demons fallen angels which is what i believe now you may have guessed by now that i think there's something here i don't laugh at the alien conspiracy i think that there has been uh, a force interacting with humanity throughout time i think that that force was the fallen angels um, as described in the Bible. That's what I believe it is, and I believe they still interact with humanity. I believe that uh, humans still interact with demons, fallen angels, and that when aliens are described, when these little green men or those guys over there, when they're described, I think that that's what people are talking about. I think they're seeing a demon, and they just are calling it an alien. And uh, in the coming great deception, that's what they'll tell you that these uh, these things are. They'll say that they are aliens, but I believe that they aren't. I believe that they're demons, and I believe that that's going to be a big part of the coming deception. But I do believe they've been around helping humanity all throughout time. Now, as far as UFOs go, I actually believe UFOs are real. Um, well, I mean, I think it's pretty well documented that they're real. It's kind of hard to deny the existence of UFOs, even in declassified documents. The government has had to acknowledge interactions. Astronauts have had interactions. Pilots, um, you know, commercial and military have had interactions in the air with uh, unidentified flying objects. It's a, it's a real thing. They, they paint it as UFOs, and if you say it, you're crazy. But things that are up in the air that people can't explain, that's called an unidentified flying object. It's a real thing. It's nothing to be ashamed of. And it happens all the time. There were the Phoenix Lights. A lot of people know about that. That was a big event. These things hovered over the Phoenix area for over an hour or, or multiple hours. And this happens. But what I think this is, for the most part, I think this is testing of extremely classified government uh, military equipment. I think they have this kind of technology, and I think they have had this kind of technology for a long time. Hitler experimented with flying saucers. 
in World War II, you know, and people thought that he actually had ones that were operational. Um, people uh, hypothesized that that is the type of craft that crashed in Roswell, was um, a Hitler-type flying saucer. And uh, like I said, he, he uh, experimented with that type of technology around that time. And with Operation Paperclip, we brought all the Nazi scientists over here. So is it so unbelievable that instead of a flying saucer crashing in Roswell, that it was the government experimenting with uh, flying saucer technology? You know, zero gravity type of stuff, free energy type of stuff. The kind of stuff that Tesla had discovered way back in the 20s and they stole from him. They, it's not like they just do all that in the trash. That's highly useful information. They're not going to share it with the general public. But I believe they have things that if you saw them and you saw them in operation, as some people I believe have, you would think that that was alien. That's an alien craft. When really, we have that ability. We have those things. Those things exist. They just haven't shown them to you yet. And I, I, I think that in the coming deception, they will show you a lot of those things. They will present those things, and they will also present these demons, but they're going to call them aliens. And they're also going to um, pretend they're here for the betterment of humanity. And as Stephen Hawking says, that's just not logically, that's just not logically the way things would go. If you, if you think, if they developed anything like humans, they'd be here to take us over. They've exhausted the resources where they're from. Now they want our planet. That is what one of the smartest men alive thinks an alien's agenda would be. It's not what it's going to be presented to you, though. They're here to help us. Now, think about which one makes more sense, whether an alien race would be here to wipe out humanity or whether an alien race would be here to help humanity. I believe that, you know, what we're going to see happen with this coming deception, and I believe it's going to tie in with Project Bluebeam, is uh, an event where they show you some technology, some weapon, some uh, spacecraft that they have, that they have had, you know, and they'll finally show you the type of craft that may have been hovering over Phoenix. And when they do, they'll also show you these demons, they'll present them as aliens here to help humanity. And that will be the event that Ronald Reagan spoke of. He used to say all the way back in the 80s that if, if uh, an extraterrestrial threat was to face humanity, how quickly we would all put aside our differences and come together as one. And I think that's going to be the final march forward, the final piece towards uh, sealing this new world order agenda, getting us all on the same page. These aliens are going to want to want to present that to us as the way to go. We got to all get on the same page, be part of a new world order agenda, all come together in order to save the earth, save the planet, save humanity. That's the way they're going to present it. But um, Satan is the father of lies. So these aren't aliens and this is not a positive agenda, no matter what they tell you or no matter what you're being told about these creatures or their intentions. So I do believe in aliens and UFOs, not all of them. But I do believe there's an alien and UFO conspiracy. I think it's undeniable. I think there's enough evidence that you can go ahead and say it's undeniable. There is an alien and UFO cover-up conspiracy going on. I believe that the reason for that is the UFOs that you see are uh, government experiments, technology like this here, the Phoenix Lights, or this over here, the Phoenix Lights. I believe that's a, a, a craft, some kind of a craft that they have the ability to use. I believe they have zero gravity technology. I believe they have free energy technology and the ability to um, to do these kind of things, to make spaceships, basically. Hitler experimented with it, and that was all the way back in World War II. I think they still experiment with it. I think that's what UFOs are. I do believe that humans have been aided throughout history. I believe it was the fallen angels. Others believe it was aliens. Every culture that you look at, has stories of aliens or visitors or whatever they call them helping them with their throughout time and history the bible discusses it and it's like i say it's also in every culture's lore you will find a talk of aliens so yes i believe there's definitely something here i also believe as i touched on there will be a great deception and that they will bring forward these aliens and say they're here with a good agenda, but what they really are are the fallen angels, demons. 
and uh, they are not here with a good agenda. And even if they were aliens, as Stephen Hawking, um, I quoted Stephen Hawking earlier in the episode, even as he said, the chances of them being here with a good agenda and not an agenda of dominance is just uh, minuscule. So one, it doesn't make any sense that they would be here to help humans. Why would they care? And two, um, I don't believe aliens are aliens. I believe aliens are demons. They're going to present them to you as an alien, and they're going to show you some really neat tricks with Project, with Project Bluebeam, and then also with some of the technology that they have that you haven't seen yet. So it's going to look pretty amazing. It's going to be very convincing. I just hope that enough people realize that these are not aliens here to help us. These are demons here to usher forward the final steps of the New World Order agenda. So that's my take. The uh, me on things and stuff or conspiracy theories and chill official take on aliens and UFOs. Now it's our turn to talk. So we're going to turn the discussion around to you guys. So Sean, flip this camera around and and let's talk to the audience and see what you guys have to say. What do you think about aliens? What what else would you like to talk about? Maybe something I didn't even say. Maybe a different topic. So Sean, turn the camera around and let's talk to the audience. It's audience participation time. 